welcome um, to the third presentation by our group tonight, taking us through social justice and civil rights. So how many of you have heard them before? I, see, they, they've developed quite the social work following. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. I also like them a lot. So um, let me thank you all for coming to the NASW conference and for coming here tonight. And um, I promise you the whole conference will be fun, um, but it'll start out tonight with great fun. So let me um, introduce, where's Dan? Uh, Dan somewhere, he's back there. Dan Jacobson, who is the narrator through the journey. And then the group, which is Catherine Ellis, Alma Muxlow, not Byron, but Bud, Michael, <laughs> and Christy McNeil. So let's welcome them, and again, let's have a great time. Thank you all. Um, just one other thing, that as they're performing tonight, you know, the, these are really tough times in this country and in the state of Michigan. And um, what I'm asking all of you to do as you listen to them is make some kind of an internal pledge for change because we're social workers and it's really up to us to change all of the difficult, sometimes awful stuff that's going on. So with that downer of an intro, um, commit yourself to change and now we'll have fun. Thanks. Hi. Great to be back here again um, for the, our third year in a row. This is continuing the conversation, actually, and it's been a very turbulent, surprising year since we've been here uh, last year at Michigan State. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about some new issues and some uh, issues that have carried on. We're going to start with immigration, which is a huge thing in um, American conversation right now. We're going to be talking about civil rights in a variety of ways, sexual misconduct in lots of different ways, and the environment. Those will be our topics for the night. Now, again, it's incredibly humbling, I have to say, to first of all be part of it with these four musicians who are very strong social advocates in their lives and their commitment to various causes. They do it through their music and through their careers. But to be in front of a room, uh, just in a room full of social workers who live and breathe and deal with this uh, lovingly every day. I mean, I'm just a professor at Western. I'm very happy to be able to do that and to have my uh, opportunity in my classes to speak about the relationship of music and various social advocacy throughout history. Beethoven did it. Mozart did it. I mean, it's amazing. Classical music, rock music, and this new class I'm teaching uh, on American music, which fits this topic so well. Looking at America changing from around 1880 to right now, one decade at a time. And it is an American history class that looks at music as a, a vehicle of change. Amazing to watch how much we have changed, how much we grow, how much we challenge it ourselves. And usually the times of turbulence, as scary as they are, end up on the other end in America with some kind of improvement somehow. That's the only thing you can hope, is that when you start hitting uh, the moment of, of crisis, that there's something good that comes out of it on the long run. But again, sometimes we worry about how much we can do, right? And again, this slideshow has quite a bit of information here, but sometimes just one little change, as you know, the little thing you do every day that can make a difference, you multiply that by thousands of people or millions of people making these little changes. The Grand Canyon, right? Doing it for billions of years, making that incredible thing one little uh, particle at a time. But again, sometimes it feels like there's just too much to deal with. But making a little change can make a big difference. Something like this. Just take the word only out of the conversation and yeah, we got a different perspective. So we're gonna try to do this tonight through music, but people in all realms of American uh, culture are doing the same in technology, in politics, 
and religion and everything else, education, whatever. It's just amazing. But again, I know, it's hard to believe, but uh, it is happening uh, little by little, and hopefully the younger people will step up as well and make these changes. We're going to start with immigration, which again is a huge topic right now, especially since that executive order around Thanksgiving of last year by President Obama to kind of call the conversation into focus. And then immediately there was a Texas court that put a stay on that. And now as of last night, we had another 70 city mayors in the United States try to push to get that court order rescinded and get things moving because they say it's critical for their cities to survive. We have now almost 100 mayors of major cities in the United States moving in this way. Um, but immigration as a, just a fact of life in America is really a very different conversation than it has been in the past. Our most famous icon in America or of America is the Statue of Liberty, which was given to us by the French, right? As a symbol of this freedom, that, uh, this, this beacon of hope for, again, your, your huddled masses yearning to be free, right? Take a look at this picture that's going to be coming up in just a moment. So many issues to deal with, but it comes down to this. A hundred years ago, we had people just packing ships just to get here like sardines, hoping for a better life. I just wonder again today, those people coming today, what their chances would be to have any, any opportunity in this country, seriously in terms of getting a job, getting on their feet. You know, our great grandparents were some of these people. And it, that's part of the conversation is just to remember who we are and how much they gave up to come here, how much we were that truly beacon of freedom that they hoped about, and that they invested in this country and have made it what it is. A lot of those workers, for instance, built the Empire State Building. They built this, the uh, San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge, the Hoover Dam, during the Depression, right? We had so many of these people fight in our wars and other things, build our country from the inside out. And uh, immigration is a, a critical part of that. But I want to start the conversation for a moment in having us understand that from 1900 to now, we grew from 75 million people to 200 million people in that 100 years or so, 115 years. Starting in around 1900, we were um, having legal immigration by about 450,000 citizens a year. And that lasted for a long time, except for the 1910s, when we doubled, almost tripled that. Except for the 1910s, we have sat at about 480,000 immigrants per year all the way through 1990 or so. And it's really interesting that now we actually have more immigrants than ever coming in legally. Over a million a year since 1990 have come in legally to this country. We have a lot of other ones who want to be legal and somehow got here under different circumstances, had children who are legal American citizens. And the idea is trying to protect our borders while we're trying to protect the tax base and protect these families, and it's a complicated issue. Our first song is going to be dealing with some of this perspective. It's a beautiful thing by Julie Gold from 1998, and it's just talking about the relationship of now to then within a family. So I'm going to turn it over to Catherine and the ensemble, and uh, this good night, New York.
so nice. I usually play canned music in my classes, but to be able to do this with a live band, it's, there's nothing better than this. That's all I can say. I do it for the Gilmore uh, piano concerts as well, and then you get to hear these incredible musicians. This is great. This is a very powerful picture, and looking at that little girl on the very far right, that face of joy and that child right there. Uh, for those of you who can't see it, I think the PBS people will be showing that a little closer up on the video. This is so uh, remarkable, and yet it's so different than what we're seeing on the streets in America these days. I mean, I respect the right for them to speak. There's no doubt about that. There are issues of national security and other things. But not all immigrants fall into that category. There's a lot of them who would be great American citizens and could help us economically and other things, and just they're people with kids. So it's getting this conversation off the streets, through the courts, it's resolved in some kind of uh, safe way for this country. But there are bigger things happening on the streets, as we all know. We've seen it in Ferguson. In particular, the uh, upper right corner video there, Season's Greetings, folks. Here we are, right? Tough to watch. And yet, it's great that we have the right to speak in this country, and people are speaking. Uh, it does trouble me a lot having lived through the 1960s and watching uh, Martin Luther King speak when I was a child and this kind of thing, to even see the slogan in the lower left-hand corner that Black Lives Matter as if they never did. It's so disturbing, right, that we can even think that that wasn't the case forever, right? It's where, where have we come? But the issue is, again, uh, all these issues with racism, first of all, are very much in the news. But this idea of holding your ground and speaking your mind is a big part of tonight's presentation. 
and stopping racism, uniting together uh, as a nation are, and as a world are really important. This song comes from the 1920s and actually was a, um, an icon of free speech for women's rights during the union busting days. When uh, if you wanted to, to ask for better working wages or whatever this was for your kids' uh, support, um, th they would sing this in the streets and then the union would come down and bust them. So this was a way, again, of standing your ground in the 20s, but uh, we've updated the song a bit tonight and uh, it's still just as poignant today as it ever was. So we shall not be moved uh, by our ensemble. Thank you. Okay, folks, your break is over. We gave you the first song, but we warned you in the literature to be ready and come and sing. And this is your first chance, so you're assuming let's do they read the literature. <laughs> They're oh, no. social workers. Okay. They just need to read the lyrics. That's all, right? That's it. Yeah. We shall not. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be stuff on the streets in America quite a bit, 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Not surprising it's happening today. But a very famous song that you're going to be hearing next was actually linked to a set of riots that were on the Sunset Strip in Hollywood in 1967, the same year that the escalation of the Vietnam War took off to such an extent. But a lot of people believe this song, For What It's Worth, by Buffalo Springfield was actually written uh, in reaction to the Vietnam conflict, but it was not. It was actually a stand your ground piece written by Stephen Stills when he saw young people having their civil rights taken away by a um, curfew law that was passed just at random in 1966 uh, in December on the Sunset Strip. Whether you were 21 years old or 35 or whatever, they said 10 o'clock, you can't gather anymore. It was just something the businesses decided to do to cut down on some of these bands and their late uh, performances and things. 
And the, the, the young kids of that time stood their ground and said, no, this is really taking away our civil right to gather. It's one of the Bill of Rights, as a matter of the number one, right? Uh, amendment number one is actually the, what, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom to gather, et cetera, right? It's all in the first one, freedom of religion. So uh, this idea of holding your ground on the Sunset Strip but what's amazing is in the upper left corner, there was a movie that came out in 1967 called the most shocking film of our generation, right? For the 60s, that's hard to say, right? The Riot on the Sunset Strip. Go on the internet and take a look at the trailer for that movie. It's unbelievable, showing this, this out of wild sex, LSD craziness, these hippies with long hair, and they have no morals. And, that's not at all what these kids were doing on the Sunset Strip. They were just rebelling. We want our right to gather. We're not causing any trouble. But what Stephen Still says in this song is, again, uh, very poignant because he is making a reference to Vietnam. There's something happening here, right? And what it is, I can't quite figure out. But there's a man with a gun over there, and he's telling me, I got to look, you know, it's not Vietnam. It's on the streets of Los Angeles here, Hollywood. What is that sound, the sound that's happening in America? And he goes one verse at a time. There's battle lines being drawn, but they're not in Vietnam. They're here, right? But it's the, this issue, and this sounds so much like today, that everybody's so interested in getting their point across that they often do not listen or will not listen to the other side, right? St. Francis, a very wise man in the 1200s, said what? Seek first to understand then to be understood, that if you listen to what someone else has to say, maybe they'll listen to you. But uh, again, a thousand years later, we're not quite doing that still. But young people are speaking their minds, but they've got to listen to the other side, and they, the other side has to listen to us. But if not, we're just out there carrying signs and saying hooray for our side without making any progress. Last verse is pretty scary. What really happens in this situation is we become paranoid and afraid to speak. Sound familiar? Right? It really sounds familiar. And as much as we respect the freedom of speech, it's usually my freedom to speak. No, we need to protect the person's freedom to speech, uh, of speech who does not agree with us. Then, then everyone's protected. It's a hard thing to do, right? So that's what we, he really says we should be afraid of, is not being able to speak in a free country. So for what it's worth, he actually couldn't even put the title Stop, children, what's that sound? He couldn't call it that because his producer said it's too, you know, too risky. So he called it for what it's worth. And it's not even in the song, the title, right? So here we are, Stephen Stills, 1967, Buffalo Springfield, a great, one of the top 500 hits in rock history.
know it strikes deep into your life it will creep well it starts when you're always afraid step out line then come and take you away every time we stop hey what's that sound everybody look what's going on to a slightly different take on civil rights, which is equality, right? We've always um, made that connection between the two things, but again, it's come to the fore quite recently here, especially in Michigan. But this idea of equality for all Americans is a difficult thing for some people to grasp, whether it's color or religion or uh, sexual identity or some other personal issue here. The thing that amazes me about this is the topic, again, of um, same-sex marriage. We're talking about love, right? Not hatred, not other things. It's really people that want to get married and are committed uh, to each other. California, of course, recently had its uh, very diverse opinion, very split, and, and turned itself inside out over that issue uh, within the last year or so. But now it's been Michigan. And uh, this idea that Michigan, again, uh, in 2004, passed a law which uh, forbid same-sex marriage in the state of Michigan. And then 10 years later, in 2014, we actually had a federal appeals court overturn that and say that it was okay to get married. So the very next day, 323 same-sex couples got married in the state of Michigan and are legally married. But within hours of that time, the same day, another court, this would have been the, uh, the, the sixth uh, appeals court or whatever in, uh, that oversees eastern Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, put a stay on that order. And so for eight months, these people were in limbo until finally that court overturned this decision. And the people who took it to that court are now taking it to the Supreme Court. It's happening right before our eyes. And at the end of this month, that's when the testimony for 15 whole minutes before the Supreme Court is going to be made and then countermade uh, in incredible ways. So we're sitting here at this critical moment of historical decision about this issue, which is tearing America apart in certain ways. So right here on our stage, we have two people who have been living this hell, to be honest, in their own personal lives going back and forth and whatever, and they just want to be committed to each other uh, in, in, and are. They're actually legally married as a civil union in 2004. But to tell you their own story, I'm going to turn it over to Catherine and Alma. So this June, Alma and I are celebrating 20 years in relationship. And thank you, thank you very much. This is our anniversary party. Yeah. yeah. And so in June in two, of 2004, Alma and I and about 60 of our closest friends and relatives, including Bud and Christy, drove across the country to Vermont where we could legally have a civil union. And Bud was actually our best man at that. I was your only man, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can always count on Bud. And Christy came all the way to Vermont with a van load of people and threw us our bachelorette party. So <laughs> just had to tell you that. But then in June of 2010, we decided to take advantage of our opportunity to upgrade because by then Vermont had allowed marriage to happen mm -hmm. in their state. And so we were legally married then in 2010. And it didn't automatically happen. We had to go back 
and do it again. Yeah. So. Yep. But even though we're not yet legal in Michigan, we are hopeful about the Supreme Court decision coming up this summer. And I have to say that I was encouraged uh, by an article in the Huffing Huffington Post that I read this morning <coughs> that talked about some of the counter arguments mm -hmm. that have been filed as briefs. And so you know there are four states that are um, going to appear and give their argument before the Supreme Court. Kentucky says that their marriage ban isn't discriminatory since LGBTs are free to get straight married. And <laughs> Michigan's brief, and I quote, is even crazier. They say that gaining marriage equality through a court order rather than a popular vote would be demeaning to gay couples. And Tennessee is sticking with the argument that if gay couples can get married, then straight couples will stop raising children in stable families somehow. And Ohio says that overturning the marriage ban would cause the people who voted for it to feel isolated. So, you know, um, regardless of the outcome of this decision, one thing that Alma and I look forward to is the ability to cover each other on our health insurance, make exactly. important medical decisions if needed on our spouse's behalf, file Michigan taxes jointly, and mm -hmm. <laughs> know that members of our own community no longer risk losing jobs or housing for being gay, and being able to adopt children jointly so that parents both have legal rights to their children. Yeah. And the song that we are about to sing is one that I look forward to someday not having to sing anymore. <laughs> um, Catherine and I, several years ago, and it was after some of these turbulent things that had happened in California, and there was a, a referendum here in Kalamazoo as well. And we went north when everybody else went south, so we were in Petoskey uh, overlooking the Little Traverse Bay. And when we got there, and it was about this time actually in April, it was completely frozen over. And over the course of the week that we were there, we noticed like cracks happening in, in all of this frozen water. And by the end of the time, the, the week that we were there, it, it was blue water rolling in. And, and that image really stood out to me because that's the way things change. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's slowly, but a crack appears and, and, and there's some movement forward and maybe there's some movement back, but, but we trust that we are moving toward justice. And so also as a part of this song, the whole idea, Lady Justice uh, blindfolded with the scale in one hand and the sword in the other, she became very real to me. And uh, this is called Reigning in Yosemite. It's raining in Yosemite, raining down the walls And I'm here in this granite building pacing the halls Of justice if there's any has eluded us once more But there's a blind woman tapping on the door Ice begins to crack Through such a brutal winter There's so much we're holding back As the sun warms the water Waves break with the roar There's a blind woman Dancing on the shore Eagle rises on the wind She calls his name That 
justice rain upon us, let it wash over me. For if one is in bondage, none of us is free. And may love like a river carry us along. There's a blind woman singing freedom song. It's raining in Yosemite, raining down the walls. And I'm here in this granite building, pacing the halls of justice. If there's any, has eluded us once more. But there's a blind woman waiting at the door. So again, it's all going to come down here at the end of the month. At least the, um, the discussions in the court will be happening. Probably by the end of the summer, a big decision will be made. And we'll see what happens from there. Now, uh, speaking again about uh, just other, other issues relating to sex and other things, is we've got the other side, people abusing people, people hating and, and just using people in the, the wrong way. And yet this stuff goes on while we prevent the other from happening, love from happening. But there's so many different kinds of misconduct and abuse of children, of athletes, of people at work, Title IX at universities, and this whole rape culture that, that uh, is so rampant, at least in the news. Uh, Western, where I work, is very adamant about this, about just making sure this doesn't happen and trying to protect the rights of people and let them speak. But it's difficult. Uh, and again, there's lots of different kinds. It can be written, it can be emotional, it can be nonverbal, verbal, physical. Uh, but again, the, what we're going to do this next song with is focusing on uh, spousal abuse or uh, emotional abuse uh, against women. And it is a uh, nomore.org is the big organization uh, nationally and internationally that's trying to end domestic violence. And the kind of power that it has accelerated and gathered uh, is so much so that what happened during the Super Bowl this year, the NFL stepped up, knowing it had had some issues with its own athletes, and stepped up. And during a public service announcement during the Super Bowl itself, they stepped up and did, a, uh, again, an incredible commercial that was quite controversial about spousal abuse and what you need to do. And uh, I, th I think it's fantastic. But on the other side of it, uh, the Super Bowl is well known to be one of the most domestically violent days of the year in, in emergency rooms and other things. So thank goodness they stepped up and did something. So this song, uh, again, here is by Charlie King from 1992. It's talking again. It's interesting that we talked about the Supreme Court just a moment ago, right? Because uh, in 1991, one of those justices who will be making this decision was put on that court under very controversial um, circumstances. And the person who accused him, who was also African American, Anita Hill, was a professor of law by this time at um, the University of Oklahoma. And uh, she had been working with him before uh, with the Equal Opportunity um, Employment Committee commission actually that uh, uh, was overseen by Clarence Thomas at the time and he was uh, not physically abusing her but he was being incredibly aggressive in talking about pornography and other things in front of her and, and uh, she was just saying he's not the right kind of person to be on the court. So she stood her ground, she went through an incredible media circus of the time and the amazing part about it before the, the Senate Judiciary Committee was when she did her uh, testimony, it was one thing, but when Clarence Thomas got up there, you know his famous words, that this is a high-tech lynching 
for uppity blacks, right? And it was just my word against her word, and it just she was the one that went down. The amazing thing about it, she didn't stay down. Yes, Clarice Thomas got, got uh, uh, approved 52 to 48 in the closest vote we've had for a, an approval rating. He's been sitting on that court ever since, quite conservative. The man he replaced was African-American, our first African-American justice, Thurgood Marshall, right? And Marshall was a very different mindset than his. Marshall was actually the person who did the greatest testimony in front of the Supreme Court that made the Brown versus Board of Education decision move in that direction. So Lyndon Johnson put him on the court in 67, and then in 91 he stepped down and Clarence Thomas replaced him. So it's, that was a big shift and a, a, a smart move again for George Bush at the time if he wanted to do that. But Anita Hill has risen quite a ways above this, and in fact she's speaking uh, here in Kalamazoo uh, in just a couple weeks, and it's amazing to see what she's doing now to advocate for things. Monday. It's Monday, yeah, exactly. And she's at the Chenery Auditorium Monday night. The uh, interesting thing is, though, what happened the year after uh, the, these uh, proceedings on the Senate floor were that we had a whole lot more women running for political office immediately by 92, right? We had women speaking out. We had more people uh, pressing charges than before. She did make her impact, whether or not it, it stopped that uh, uh, approval or not of the Supreme Court justice. But here is the song, The Ballad of Anita Hill, and it'll make a reference to that very snide comment there by uh, Clarence Thomas in the hearings. But I'll turn it over to the ensemble. <coughs> I'll sing you a song of Anita Hill And a great thing she has done Took a dirty little game that thrives in the dark And she dragged it out into the sun She dragged it out into the sun Good friends where everyone could see It wasn't good enough for the Senate But it's good enough for me It wasn't good enough for the Senate But it's good enough for me the Senate, the White House, the powerful crew, Judge Thomas, the man of the day. They didn't want to listen to Anita Hill, but she told the truth anyway. She told the truth anyway, good friends at the risk of a job and her name. And wouldn't this world be a better place if some of them would do the same? And wouldn't this world be a better place if some of them would do the same? It wasn't that she didn't feel pressure. It wasn't that she didn't feel fright. It wasn't that she stood to gain a damn thing. She, she just did what she knew was right. She did what she knew was right. Good friends, and she stood with an iron will. And if Clarence really wants to be uppity, he could take a lesson, a lesson, a lesson from Anita. I had a call from a good old friend of mine. She said, what does it mean to you? I said, if Anita can stand and deliver, maybe I can do it too. Cause it's happened to me and I let it pass. In anger, shame, and fear. But I ain't gonna take that crap anymore. Best news there's been all year. Best news there's been all year, good friends, for the battle is raging still. Stand up, talk back, don't take their crap. Three cheers for Anita Hill. Stand up, talk back, don't take their crap. Three cheers for Anita Hill. And again, she'll be here Monday night, speaking again to a whole other generation as well of university students who need to stand their ground as well. Um, I was at a, a speech a couple of weeks ago by a different speaker was talking about 
the use of technology and how much that is, is causing problems, again, for sexual harassment and other things, forwarding on, uh, pictures of people, ruining their lives through technological forwarding of, of pictures. But she actually made the argument that it can be used as a tool to empower women and people who are being uh, victimized by this stuff because you just forward it to other people and get all these people tweeting about it and, and then you can go right to the source and say, you're, you know, stop doing what you're doing. It's a, it can be both ways. So Anita Hills had a, a big impact on, um, on lots of women and other things. But again, this idea of um, the, the time to talk and the, the no more.org situation is really quite poignantly put out in this song by the, the Byrne Sisters. They are a folk ensemble from Ithaca, New York. They have the most incredible harmony as four sisters that are just amazing. But they speak loud and clear. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, the ensemble again to do No More Silence. And you may not have heard this song before. Many of you probably haven't. But it's one that you can learn quickly. So I hope that as you pick it up, you'll join in. Thank you, Steve Barber, Jim Timmons. And um, again, it's so many issues here, not just uh, spousal abuse, domestic abuse, things on college campuses. There's so much violence going on, and, and you know that better than anybody. I'm speaking, preaching to the choir. You, you deal with this on a daily basis, and 
I admire you. We do so much for what you do to help these people. But uh, again, you can only help those who speak out. And I know it breaks your heart to know that there's so many more who are just afraid to even say something. So that's again why the NFL statement was so strong. Just pick that phone up and make that call. Um, simple enough. Now, we've got abuse going on in <laughs> other ways. I love these segues. But um, the environment is, is, is also being abused in other ways. And I, I'm always amazed at this because, I mean, we have such great technology. We do have needs for energy and other things. We've got billions and billions of people who need to live off this planet. But on the other side of it, it's as if we think we own it sometimes. And we're just living here. We're, we have the great fortune to be alive on a planet like this with all these resources. But um, it just brought to mind in preparing this part of, of the presentation that when I was a little boy, um, my, my parents were still together. My father uh, took our family, made sure every spring he'd pull us out of school a week early, right, just to get us out of school. But he'd take us on a trip up to, uh, I was in, in Southern California. So he'd take us up to Yosemite or he'd take us up to Crater Lake or even all the way into Montana or whatever it was to see the beauty of, the, of this country and to see nature, and no matter how busy we were to get our five kids and my two parents and the campground and all that out of there, he would always stop. And he was a very humble carpenter. He wasn't like some big advocate person, but he, he just said, uh, you know, go back and, and pick that trash up or go up back and pick this thing up. He said, it's important that you leave a place better than when you got here, and I will never forget this. But this idea of leaving our planet better than when we got here, tough job to do, I think. But leaving it even in the same state as when we got here will be a miracle, I think, at this point. Um, but there's lots of issues again. This song, first one here, is by John Prine from 1971, at the height of the ecological disasters we were having in uh, this country. Coal mining and strip mining and all of this that was happening. And this song, A Paradise, is actually about a city, a little city where he grew up, and trying to remember his childhood and even asking his father to go back and take him places. And he goes, well, I'm sorry, it's too late. They're not there anymore, right? Uh, someone else took them in their truck. So here is Paradise by John Prine. He's so slow. <laughs> you know, I have this recurring dream that I have to tell you about. Sorry, I, I usually listen a lot, so I don't get to tell much, many stories. But um, I have this recurring dream that I'm ready to start a gig, and I can't get my guitar strap. Um, <laughs> dream or nightmare? And, or well, or yeah. premonition. But if any of you... <laughs> So if any of you would like to analyze that for me, I'll be available. We're, we're just going to help you have a corrective emotional experience here tonight. Sometimes a guitar strap is just a guitar strap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Root. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. Air smelled like snakes and we chew 
shoot with our pistols, but empty hot bottles was all we would kill. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold. And they tortured the timber and stripped all the land. Well, they dug for their coal till the land was forsaken. And they rolled it all down as the progress of man. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late. Mr. Peabody's cold train is folded away. Let my soul roll on up to, to the Rochester Dam. I'll be halfway to heaven with paradise waiting, just five miles away from wherever I am. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my son. But you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold train has hauled it away. Thank you. We've had a few other disasters recently, as we know. That's, uh, and again, not knowing exactly what's going to come of this in the next uh, generation or so is the big question. Uh, we've got other things that have happened recently, though. Again, the huge tsunami that hit after the earthquake in Japan and the nuclear radiation that, again, the winds blow, the ocean currents go uh, towards the west coast of the United States. And uh, there was quite a bit of radiation in the water and everything else. Um, so this next song, again, called Power, was written by Joanna Hall and John Hall. John Hall, one of the great songwriters, actually, of that, the 1960s. He's now been a, um, a congressman from New York, and so he can do more as an advocate there. But uh, again, this song is just talking about power, and it's an interesting double entendre there, right? That uh, we need power to energize the world, but there's also um, an abuse of power in the getting of that power and the use of it. So this is uh, powered by Joanna and John Hall. Hopefully the strap is on. By the way, I was going to tell you one story there. You should be afraid of this because uh, I was in the middle of a performance when I was in college, and I was doing a solo for this big choral concert, and my guitar strap gave out. And I was like, it was amazing to actually have to play guitar down here uh, for about two minutes till I could get it back up. But I, it's not easy to play with this with, without they a strap. Just, they just thought you really were racking tough. out. Yeah, uh, just... <laughs> I think they noticed my strap fell. Yes, I think it was. A little time out for tuning. <coughs> because you care. Because I care. Three. Oh. Just give me the warm power of the sun. Give me the steady flow of a waterfall. Give me the spirit of living things as they return to play. Just give me the restless power of the wind. Give me the comforting 
has its body and soul. has to choose just give me the warm power of the sun Actually, interesting time period here. We've just seen gas prices drop. It's tremendously right, which is fantastic. But uh, the reason some of that is happening is fracking, which is uh, a very ingenious technology. It's incredible that Americans invented a way to drill down below the shale level of rock and then drill horizontal. It's how you get it out of the ground after that that is kind of dangerous. But we don't know what that's going to be. Uh, the radiation actually that hit. Um, the, the Japanese uh, coastland and, and whatever, it was kind of a moderate risk level. So this issue is they're not going to be able to see cancer and other things happening right away, but this is something that happens over generations of time. The fallout for, from this disaster there will be uh, something we'll see in the next 20 years, and uh, it's just be amazing to see what will happen with that. Now on the other side of it, we've got something much closer to home here in Michigan. And it's such a beautiful place. Uh, I, get a, I grew up in California, which is a beautiful place. But Michigan just takes my breath away. And to see so many different things, uh, amazing. In particular, this one icicle uh, of a pier that you're going to see in a little bit during the winter. But uh, Bob Barton in 1992, uh, she's a big environmental activist and songwriter. And I was trying to find some information about this song as a musicologist. And I couldn't find the date for this song. So I asked Catherine if she knew. And I got right back a, an email from Bob Barton. Boom, just like that. It's the kind of connections that Catherine's got. And uh, she explained this thing. Was, was a, uh, she was going to Pennsylvania to do some environmental activism as a, uh, a person working in a department of environment there. And she was leaving Michigan for the first time. And she was telling her nephew, who she had grown, she'd watched him grow up, and she'd taken him on canoe trips in every special place in Michigan she knew. And she just said, I have to leave, but it's in your hands now. Take care of it. You know how precious this is to me, and it's a little bit scary. So this is a song that was uh, a letter to Joshua, her, her nephew, uh, that she now calls by Michigan, Bob Barton. Ooh, 
discovered her tall sandy shores My heart's always dreamed of its island As wild as the blue summer skies Where wolves still run freely And nighttime is really as beautiful as our own soul as beautiful as our own souls Won't you take good care of my Michigan Watch over the Great Lakes, my home My heart will be yearning to return to the pines Her cold and rocky shore place I'll always call home. Now I am into my thirties with heavy heart and steady hand. I write out this farewell to the land that I love. My work's taking me from the land. Words taking me from the to take you to Isle Royal when you are a little more grown I'll teach you the flowers I'll show you a loon and sing you the sparrow's sweet song little one always remember to travel to one of her shores where we cheer for the sunset we cheer for the islands we cheer just to see the full moon we cheer just to see the full moon won't you take good care of my Michigan, watch over the Great Lakes, my home. My heart will be yearning to return to the pines, her cold and rocky shores. It's the place I'll always call home. Won't you take good Watch over the Great Lakes, my home. My heart will be yearning to return to the pines, her cold and rocky shores. It's a place I'll always call my home. Now, we're not going to do this song tonight, but it just brought me to mind just imagining, hoping. You know, it, it's keeping that alive. It's plenty. But it's so many of the people, the messengers who've tried to keep that particular image going were, have been taken. Martin Luther King was. John Lennon was. Here in America, in a free country, speaking their minds freely. But that can't stop people from standing up, right? It never stopped them before, and it, it can't stop us now, really. Um, this idea of the peace train or just having a peace movement, people getting along together, it's been, it's been a very popular thing since the 1960s. 
But one of the greatest songs of that era was by Cat Stevens. You all know this song, 1971. But what did he do six years later? He changed his name and he, he, had, he became a Muslim, right? A peaceful one. He wanted to say, the, the, you know, it's a peaceful religion too in the moderate way. And he, he changed his name to Yusuf Islam, right? And immediately, all these people that loved him, we hate you now, right? This is same thing, advocating the same stuff. Change of name was enough to, to lose a big part of his audience. But if you look at these words carefully, they're so amazing. They're just something I want to have on my, my door as I exit every day, just to read them. I'm not kidding, just to make me realize that, that, that things are OK. We, you know, there are people, lots of us here, that care. There's more people that care than we see in the news. That's all, right? We need to keep knowing that. But uh, we're going to hear Peace Train now by Cat Stevens, Yusuf Islam. And um, this is sing along all you want, right? You know, I realized that last song I sang there, yeah. as an instrumentalist, it's really weird not to have something in your hands when you're singing. So I'm going to just hang on to this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, who knows where these hands will go. I have to okay, <laughs> so Bud's cello is his transitional object. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be an old T-shirt, but <laughs> that strap now, do you? Yeah. <laughs> now I've been happy lately, thinking about the good things to come. Something good has begun. Oh, I've been smiling lately, dreaming about the world as one. And I believe it could be someday it's going to come. It's out on the edge of darkness, there rides a peace train. A peace train, take this country, come take me home. Yeah. Now I've been smiling lately, thinking about the good things to come.
Um, this idea, again, of global peace, it, it may be a um, pie-in-the-sky thing literally, but you know, if enough people can keep focusing on that, we can at least teach our children to keep moving in that direction. But uh, the next song that we're going to be talking about is really how do we look from the outside? I mean, we see these beautiful pictures that NASA sends us and other things, breathtaking things. And it looks so calm and serene, but everything is spinning and everything is moving and everything is changing. And the closer you get to the surface or below the surface, the more turbulent. It, it's amazing to think about. On the other side of it, how minuscule, just in terms of physical space, the Earth is compared to the solar system, to the Milky Way, to the whatever. It's mind-boggling to think about that. But that's somewhere, the odds again of, first of all, another life form somewhere, just statistically, are enormous. They're just mathematically enormous, whether they're valid or not, I don't know. But sometimes I wonder if why we're so afraid of finding another life form, to be afraid of it. They may have the solution to all the problems we've got, you know, you never know. Be, we're, we're just so used to being afraid of what we don't know. But out there, again, uh, for those of you that have faith or whatever, there's a creator that, that is looking on us somehow. And um, that's what this next song is about, which is, again, raising hope, which is the end of our message here. But it's a song from a distance by Julie Gold. She wrote the first song that we did tonight. But this one won her quite a bit of accolades. Uh, she won a, a, a Grammy Award for the Song of the Year in 1990 when Bette Medler got this song from uh, Kathy Griffiths, who had heard it from Julie Gold. And uh, you'll hear the, 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 the Griffiths version tonight, right? But uh, Bette Medler, again, won a Grammy for the Song of the Year. At the most critical time, 1990, we were in the middle of uh, the first uh, Mideast War, first Afghani War, or whatever this was, Iran. And uh, the timing of it was so amazing. Again, the turbulence of, of America, again, in the Gulf War is what it was called. And this was a big hit at that time. So we're going to hear again from a distance uh, by our ensemble here. So we hope you'll help. I bet most of you remember this from the radio. snow-capped mountains white. 
different way of looking at the earth. Maybe we got to do a little more changing than this, but uh, that would work. But again, it's, uh, in the past, we, we've got this with immigration, but now the comparison of then and now, I'll just let it speak for itself in retrospect for what we've done tonight. And Monday night. But again, the question that was asked at the start here tonight was again, what can you do? What do you do? I, again, you're so active in what you're doing, but that's what you challenge them to do tonight, right? The idea of being the change, right? We can all do a, our little part that we can do, some more than others. But I'm always amazed every time we get to this point of the, the evening at what you, you are challenged to be as an organization here, you, that you've gathered to try to get new ideas about how you can work together and make a, a bigger difference than even you've done in the past. Social workers are incredibly important in social change, and you, you kind of do it behind the scenes. You know, you're not in the news all the time, but you're doing all the groundwork, and I, I just, I'm just amazed at it. it makes, I guess it makes me want to cry, actually. But your code of ethics, again, is to make sure you protect those who cannot uh, stand up for themselves, right? living in poverty and social justice, the kinds of things we've spoken about tonight that musicians can sort of speak about, but you do every day. There's so many ways to serve. Like I said, it's, it's great for us to be able to do what we can do through music. Test at 9 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, by the way. You know this, right? It's only worth 70% of your final grade. It's fine. This, again, is the biggest one. Just so much packed into that one paragraph. It's amazing. But it takes into account everything we've talked about, as diverse as these things were. They're all right there in that paragraph. So again, as collectively, you can threaten us, right? Not you, but they, right? Can threaten us or beat us, can jail us. But for us on the stage, you're not going to stop us from singing tonight, right? So that's the way it goes. As a matter of fact, they're going to pull me up on stage now. So I can sing with them now. And so now you have to sing, because we're all going to sing together. So take me. Welcome Dan Jacobson to the stage. 
And I have some big thank yous to say tonight to Dr. Maxine Thome, to Tricia McCarthy, to our wonderful sound people who have done a fabulous job, David Munier, and also to the people of Detroit Public TV who have come all the way over here tonight. Thank you very much. And from all of us, we wish you continued advocacy and want to thank you so very much for being here and for continuing the journey. Christy McNeil, Bud Michael, Alma Muxlow, Catherine Ellis, and Dan Jacobson. So we'll see if we can fit one more on this stage. You bet. Okay, here we go. is but a song we sing Fear's the way we die You can make the mountains ring Or make the angels cry Though the bird is on the surely pass when the one who left us here returns for us at last we, we are but a moment sunlight just fading in the grass come on people now We hold the key to love and fear There in our trembling hands Just one key unlocks them both Is there at your command Come on people now So good luck with your conference. It's such a beautiful thing to be involved with. Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Yeah, and we're going to ask you just to keep standing because
because I think everybody's ready to stand up. And plus, I think they're reprise. That helps your voice carry. How do we do this more of this? But now the pressure's on. So we're not going to sing at all. How's that? And then that's real pressure. <laughs> then you'll know what it feels like. Okay. Let's Time see. for you to enter. Let's start with the third verse. <laughs> okay. If you hear the song I sing, we sing, then you will understand. We hold the key to love and they're in our trembling hands. Just one key, just one key unlocks them both. It there at your command. Here we go. Come on, people, now smile on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love one another right now. Want to hold hands for a second, please? From the 60s? <laughs> Seriously. Come on. Do the wave, you know? Now, smile on your brother. Everybody, everybody get together. Try to love one another right now. Have you got one more in you? Come on, people now. Smile on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love one another right now. Right now. Thanks so much. Thanks to all of you.